three, two. All right, two for Tuesday. How you doing? Mike from Sunspot here, drinking at you. Mm. And a cheers on Tuesday, May 19th. House arrest, week eight. Wendy, how are you feeling today? Greetings. I feel awesome today. Good. Good. Thanks. Yeah. Can't right. complain. It's It's been nice. The weather's been getting better and better. And yes. fresh air is delightful when you can get out there. Right. So And no, I... It's been all right. It's been, uh, yeah. As, as far as the, the warming temperatures um, warm the cockles of my cold heart. It makes a difference. It does make a big difference. Even though it's been a little gloomy. Yes. A touch. But... That's okay. I mean, it's the temperature is is nice. So, yeah. All right. I'll take it. I, I'm gonna try a, a watch party here. So, um, I'm gonna do that really quick and see that. Um, you maybe know, I'll do a watch party too. That would be great. So we could all have our little watch parties, uh, to see what's going on. You get a watch party, and you get a watch party. That's right. Well, it's whatever happens to watch with the Facebook algorithm. <laughs> what we can do with that. So a new, a new experiment every week. Yes. Trying to figure things out. It certainly is. Um, so. All right. Okay. Uh, so okay. started that. And anyway, uh, we've been having a lot of fun. If you guys joined us on um, Sunday, that was a really interesting conversation with uh, Southern California MUFON uh, chief investigator Earl Gray and also musician and he played one of his cool songs for us and uh, that was a real treat that was just a couple of days ago um, we had a whole live cast dedicated to the paranormal all right oh looks like some friends um, have started rolling in Sharon the red hair looks great Wendy oh thank you Sharon so yes I did a little uh, I did a little home salon action yesterday and it was getting very, let's just say I was feeling a bit dull. So uh, That's our first I, toast. Cheers, Sharon. Thanks cheers, for joining Sharon. us tonight. Always great to see you. Mm -hmm. And here comes the second toast. Abby. Oh, Abby. Hello. Hello. Cheers. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, hey. we're just hanging out. It's Tuesday. We're not going anywhere. So we thought... Uh, we'd spend with you. Uh, and Stu coming in. That's toast number hey, three. Hey, Stu. All right. What's up in Ohio? I love the beginning of these uh, because by like 15 minutes in, I'm I know, a little, like little cross-eyed. I'm a little cross-eyed <laughs> coming in. Uh, good to see you, Stu. Oh, Bart, toast yes. number four. Out to you. Oh, my gosh, Looking Bart. Guys. Toast to you, my friend. What's up? Cheers. Mm. Uh, that reminds me that I saw an... E a post or an email or I don't know. I saw a notification somewhere that the hop garden is like sort of reopening. I mean, they're not opening the, the like tasting room, but you can go in, get your oh, beer, beer the and garden. still enjoy the park. Yeah. So that's really exciting. I think because that, that is, that, that seems like the perfect place if you're going to go somewhere and have plenty of space, plenty yes. of, you know, air, <laughs> open air, to, to keep yourself safe and keep yourself um, just yes. enjoying stuff. So hopefully we can do some music at the Hop Garden sooner rather than later. Oh, Robin's coming in. Uh, a toast to red hair, to the red-haired lady. Hey, hey, thank you, Robin. Very good. And happy anniversary. It's oh, her and Ted's anniversary that's today. That's fantastic. Happy anniversary so, to you and Ted. Yeah. If you guys don't know, um, they, they run the Haunted Galena Tour in – uh, Galena, Illinois, and it is the highlight of Galena, I got to say. And so, toasted to red-haired yes. women. Yay, it. all right. Thank you. And yes, you have exceptional red hair as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, the the Haunted Galena Conference would have been last weekend, and we were going to perform at that and, um, of course, take part in all the exciting paranormal activities that they had planned. But right. unfortunately, due to the whole situation, it uh, – had to be moved, but we will be there next year. So yes, we're next looking forward April. to that. Next April. Yes. And then uh, we'll tell you guys about that as soon as we get more details and as soon as it comes. But uh, we're all going to be hanging out in Galena next April. It's going to be awesome. Uh, Bart, love the hop garden. Yeah. I know. Nice. I, I thought of you right away, Bart, when I saw that because I was like, him. oh, 
Bart and Lisa are going to want to know when it's when it's opening. That's so. right. That's... I'll let you know as soon as I hear they're going to have music because that's right. that's the that's when we really know that things are going to be a okay. Yeah, you know, speaking of uh, haunted places or ghost stories, and um, I think that should lead into the first song uh, we were going to play tonight. Oh, and cool. To talk a little, so we didn't just record this this week. We actually recorded this uh, the la- like November thirtieth in two thousand eighteen. And this is at the Green County Asylum in Monroe, Wisconsin. And the cool thing about the Green County Asylum is it's not just, um, you know, it's not like it was asylum 100 years ago. It's not like it was, you know, it, it was an asylum 100 years ago because it was built as a Green County Asylum and, and Poor Farm back when they called them Poor Farms, um, like in 1863. So it was like built during the Civil War. Um and so it wasn't an, it was a, an asylum 100 years ago but it was used like right up until a few years ago and it, as an asylum and in fact as a place for like the the health and human services building in Green County it's been used all the way up until uh like September of 2018 and so you know that's how we heard about it oh real quick uh John Drajga John, toast to you. Hey, John, our East Coast friend. Yep, hoping you're doing well. Cheers. In Jersey. Uh, at Mark Johnson, hoping you're doing well in Minnesota. We'll get to the story in a second. Hello, Mark. Hello, Mark. Cheers to you. Cheers to you brother. Good to see you again. And so, um, so we heard about this because um, my wife had to go there to do like a training because she works with different uh, health and human services. Um, uh, departments all through the state and in, in some counties. And so she was going to the Green County Asylum and she was like doing a training on food stamps or something like that because she works, she's an attorney for a nonprofit that helps with government services. And so she's there and um, they're like, oh yeah, we're going to move buildings uh, coming up. They just finished the new building. So we're going to move out of the office here. And then the girls who's in the office with my wife and, and the person talking to her says, don't talk about that. The ghosts don't like it. And my wife love it when you hear that. Right. And my wife's like, what? Um, and she's like, yeah. Uh, last time we were talking about moving buildings, the ghost got so mad, they knocked the plate and the coffee cup um, off the table. Da, 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 da. They said that's not the first time that things have moved around. They saw weird stuff in the asylum. And so uh, these secretaries like completely believe that the place was mm-hmm. super haunted. And my wife's like, well, don't, don't tell me about it. Cause I don't care. <laughs> She's like, but you know who will care? My husband. Right. Which was very thoughtful of her to keep, <laughs> yes. you know, keep you in mind on that. Right. So thank you, Chris. Yeah. And, um, and so she, uh, she said like, she, she asked the, uh, the director of the green County health and human services. She goes, do you think this might be a place where, you know, uh, my husband and maybe his band uh, could come investigate. And um, the guy was like, yeah, that would be awesome. And so um, he let us come in November, like before, like maybe it was just a couple weeks before it was scheduled to be demolished. Right. If I, I mean, I, it was a couple years ago, but he let us just roll in, check out the whole place and uh, um, do like, a paranormal investigation there. And he even took us around and showed us the places where people have had paranormal experiences. And And we had pretty much the whole place to ourselves, which is a rarity for any kind of, uh, you know, facility of that size. Usually there's some, you know, there's people spread throughout it or whatever, or even just like a maintenance person or that type of thing. So we had it. We had a whole entire day, and uh, they were incredibly generous to let us do that, to let us wander around and just kind of explore and document the place. Yeah, it was, it was awesome. Um, the one thing about it that was difficult was the fact that it was like just freezing. Oh, it was so cold. It was about twenty-five degrees outside, and so inside the asylum there was no heat because it, everything had been shut off this place was scheduled for demolition and um so it ended up being probably one of the coldest investigations it made it made yeah. the old south pittsburgh hospital seem warm well 
Yeah, those two are probably the top two worst days of like coldness I can remember. No, there was a third one. Yeah. That was the dead of winter uh, event in Chicago. Wait, but one last one, Wendy. The spend the night video recording. Oh yeah, we <laughs> lest can, we forget. We can't go anywhere without freezing our tukuses off. Took is it's it part took, of is the took I? I tukuses. Yeah, I mean, I think that sounds about right. Yeah. But yeah, we can't be. You know, that's part of being a Wisconsin band. Unfortunately, is is just freezing. You uh, you you, you got to keep that skin nice and thick. <laughs> but yeah, I remember that day just being like it was painful. So I know yeah. it's a lot of talking about cold, and thankfully we're we're Bastard. not in the cold part of the year anymore. So right. oh, here's it's Scott. okay. Here's Scott. Impossible to tell if there was a cold spot, right? Because it was all cold spots. <laughs> it was all cold right. spots in that place. So true. Uh, real quick, Terry, and a toast to Terry. Hello, Terry. Hello, Mrs. Cheers, Terry. lady. Good to see ya. Mm -hmm. I mean, see ya. <laughs> right. And uh, Ryan, that sounds fun and terrifying at the same time. Well, you know, it it wasn't that scary of a place. Yeah. There was one room in particular where people said they had negative experiences with the ghost, and that was. Um, like cell number eight or something like that. I was just looking at the footage uh, a few minutes ago of actually Scott Marcus, our buddy um, in there and like with the ghost meter, or whatever talking, we had all of our, we had all of our uh, like microphones on hoping that we could capture some EVs. And um, I did, you know, but I was just watching that. It's like, there was one particular uh, room that housed like what people of the residence yeah, place. Yeah. Of, of the negative of the negative kind of association because it was a place where people, I mean, it was an asylum. Yeah. Um, and like, there's no stories like, you know, there was no stories about any like kind of strange experimentation or anything like that, but it was an asylum from the 1860s. Um, right. And we know like we saw, you know, there was an area where they had like the shackles for, for keeping people oh, yeah, like in the straight jackets the and whatnot. So, I mean, it wasn't like, like people were there for a, a pleasant vacation necessarily. <laughs> well, okay. It, it wasn't like, um, we did a virtual ghost tour on Saturday night in Madison of Madison. And so Lisa, uh, another one of our Patreons and also Madison ghost tour guide. She was, Lisa! she was, and Patreon. Uh, right. Oh, I, I thought I said that, but, uh, but yes. Oh, and, sorry. And, and a proud patron. Um, uh, Lisa was telling people that the Lakeview sanatorium in Madison, that is the, supposedly a haunted place sanatorium hill of madison that was a tuberculosis sanatorium so it wasn't a place you went to if you were crazy that was mendota mental institute where ed gein was right you would go to sanatorium hill uh if you just had tuberculosis mm -hmm. so when people think of the word sanitarium they think of return to oz sanitarium right? <laughs> yeah, right. i think of metallica um Oh, Matt, Mark Johnson, if you can see a shadow figure in the dark, you can feel a cold spot in the cold. What's well, colder than ah. cold? Cooler than cold? Ice cold. Ice cold. Let me some sugar. I am your neighbor. We need to go on a, a ghost search. It would be a spiffy what? option for Patreon or other funding. Agreed. And we, you know, oh, we were just absolutely. talking about doing some um, Patreon field trips coming up uh, when we don't have House on the safe. Rock. Yep. House we talked on the about rock. last week. And the, the sanitarium for right Lakeview Lakeview Park people have seen a lot of weird things, particularly shadow people and stuff. <clears throat> and there's even a um, there is a uh, forest. I got you, Terry. I'm not going to let people hang and think that you don't know how to spell. <laughs> I'm with you. Um, but the, you know, there's even a cemetery there, um, and, and it, it's it's an interesting place, and it does have a lot of, of cool history. But the place we were in Green County was a full blown sanitarium no like sicko doctors or you know they didn't have like lobotomy but was, information but what, what wendy oh i was just gonna say that you know it was part of the 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 poor farm yes so people you know the the inmates or whatever right <laughs> it was all like a community where they had help with the farming and that type of thing Right. And so the idea, I mean, there were a lot of positive stories in addition to probably some rough stories. And so most of the spirits that people felt actually, we hope, right. <laughs> we thought that day until, unless something came back um, with us, but, um, but the stories that people were telling were, is that the activity would like 
be boosted when people would discuss the fact that the place was going to be torn down. So it would be spirit. Well, you need a permission slip. George, actually, and uh, George, here's a toast to you real quick. Probably. Um, you, will, yeah. you will need a permission slip, George, probably from Terry. Uh, he could have a guest pass. Right. <laughs> but So we go to the Green County Asylum. We, we didn't get anything. I mean, we haven't gone over the footage of the fine tooth comb yet. Um, we didn't have anything but, jump, jump out at us or anything, but it, it was a pretty cool experience to have eight yeah. hours and have a guided tour also in the beginning um, from the direct, like it wasn't like your usual ghost guy who might be like trying to jazz it up or whatever. I mean, he's an official in the, like the county government. And so he has something to lose by acting like a crazy guy. And so I think that made everything feel a little bit more real to me because it's, you know, it wasn't somebody who was trying to make a living off of ghost tours. It was somebody who was trying to, who, who had experiences and wanted to share those experiences. Right. And so that, I liked the, the portion of the day where we, like the four of us split off in different directions. So we were there with your sister, Allison and Scott and, um, my Scott <laughs> and, uh, so after, you know, we, we got the tour of the place and then we explored it together and went from place to place and, you know, did some EVP type recording and used our little ghost hunting tools as best we could. But then there was a part of the day where we each just went, it was so huge that we could actually go to separate areas and not worry about affecting each other's, you know, footage. So um, that was really kind of scary because that point I went into a, a common area and I just you know set up the camera and I had the recorder going and I just sat in the room completely alone and just started doing the uh the ghost hunters question asking and right. um listening listening for unusual sounds and just seeing if I felt anything weird and there was one point where I asked a question I don't remember what it was but I there was like a distinct like I want to say like a tinkling kind of sound, yeah. <laughs> almost like a rain stick. That was and the devil's I got urine. So excited! I got so excited. Well, it sounded like a rain stick. It's kind of like a soothing, like. But um. That was safe. So I got. I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I'm having an experience. This is cool. But then, unfortunately, I stuck around and waited, and um, I mean, not unfortunately, but I debunked it basically because it ended up being something in the pipes because I heard it happen a few times after that, like not in response to anything. So, and then we all went there and heard it too. <sighs> yeah. yeah. But it was exciting for a moment. Cause well, I thought exciting. maybe it was exciting when it's we like, all heard it. We're like, Oh, we, we hear it. We hear it. We hear it too. Yeah. And then we debunked it. But the thing is that's, that's what you do. Because the thing is, um, if you can, if you can debunk, uh, all of the rational explanations, then the only thing left is the devil. No, but, or you just you just but having something that you know you can't explain with, yes. with the evidence that you have, that's exciting. Whether or not it's paranormal, it's just like hey, that's kind of cool. We humans don't know everything, right? As Scott says, after our evidence review, uh, it was like space balls. <laughs> after, after we were done, co after we were done combing the desert, it was like man, we ain't found shit. Right, that is how it we were felt. so excited, and it was promising. But alas, you know, there still could be something on there because sometimes evidence is very subtle. Yes, but uh, I was hoping for, I was hoping to have that, you know, oh, moment. Yeah. But well, well, let's jump into maybe next time. So, um, we put all of our cameras up. Uh, Scott put up the uh, thermal camera and the full range camera, and we did a quick video. We played some music there seeing if that could activate some spiritual activity and so um we played pretend and uh, yeah and it was in the hallway of where the residential rooms the were. people that live so, there yeah so it seemed like an area where you know if if, if anybody decided to, to stick around maybe maybe they want to hear some music and i don't know right and so <laughs> let's go take a look uh and just watching this footage is going to make me feel cold but uh, let's, go, let's go here, pretend, live from a haunted asylum. Okay, rolling here. Maybe that's why I feel so old. My life flashes before my 
Come on out, out, ghosties. We want to. I'm so cold. We want to be so haunted. So cold. So, so cold. You know, I was just like watching that made me remember, like I had a flashback to uh, my feet were completely numb to the point where I could barely walk. And I was like wondering, you know, am I going to like, what's <laughs> right? Is it, is <laughs> am I going to get frostbite and lose my toes? <laughs> yeah. No, that was, a, that was ridiculous. A, that was a tough one. That was a particular, that was a tough one. Um, but it was it was a fun time, and uh, you know, thanks to everybody who in video, um, you could see how cold your feet were in the thermal. Right, right. Well, exactly. Yes, I know. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. But the, like Mike said, Mike pointed out the the thermal camera was saying it was like in the fifties, the air like between us, and I don't even I can't I cannot believe that. But outside, it was like super windy, like below zero wind chill e kind of yeah. maybe not below zero but it was definitely below freezing so uh it just i don't know how it was that warm well, i don't know how it was in the 50s scott was trying to get some drone footage because we went like cause we got some footage from inside the oh, yeah. and we get drone footage <laughs> and we were going to put together like a little package you know with the drone stuff with the stuff inside maybe with some evidence and then do a recap later all together um and we still might we still might if we find something but here's the thing it was too cold for the drone yeah, the drone refused to to cooperate. Yeah, like they <laughs> it was too... like, uh, uh-uh, you fool, you human fools. Right, like we're... I don't fly in this. Are you... Right, the drone was like, this is too dangerous. But once again, a computer smarter than us. You know, <laughs> I still think, and Mark, I agree. I, I, when you pay, play for the entities, they'd be pretty jazz, something different. Uh, well, you don't think so, right? I hope so, Mark. Thank you. We would hope yeah. so. Um, but we did have a, a really great time that day, and I, what I thought was cool. Um, particularly was that or, or, you know, the stories we got were from people who had nothing like no skin in the game. And the stories felt really like lived in experiences that, you know, when you, when you want to find the haunted stories of a place, 
uh, you can talk to the investigators and that's a good way, place to start. But if you want to go deeper, you got to talk to the people who work there every day and because they have to go there to make money. Um, and so like, right. So they don't have a choice about going there. Like ghost hunters want to go to a place and they're looking for an experience. People go to work just so they can get a paycheck. They're not going there, you know, because they're like, oh man, I really want to have a paranormal experience. They're like, they're thinking about Christmas presents. They're thinking about their kids. They're thinking yeah. about like boyfriends, or girlfriends or heartbreaks or the things that human life consists of. And while they're living their life, paranormal shit goes down. And so that's why those are the most exciting experiences to me because um, they're like, yeah, we were just talking about, you know, we we're just talking about maybe we'll get a better office in the new place. All of a sudden, the ghosts get mad at us. Um, I even took a picture where that particularly happened and um, somebody had written in pencil on like right above the door jam. had written something that said, uh, goodbye ghosts in that particular room. And it wasn't a ghost. It was somebody who worked there. And so that was their last act when they, before they went into the new building, they were a little goodbye ghost to say goodbye to everybody. And that was fun. Yeah. <laughs> Scott. So what's going on? Hopefully we can get them to sing oh. along sometime. I think we had some EMF detectors and voice recorders going in the deep background, just in case we had a psychic mosh pit going. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you always think that maybe maybe there's somebody who just uh, really liked music or whatever, and maybe the energy of of that type of mm -hmm. you know connection would mean would something. Be, to yeah, it it or it might show itself when when music is around or the emotion of music is is being shared. So, well, one of these that's days what we're, we're trying for. <laughs> we're gonna get some wicked evidence on you know one of these. Hey, I know. Real quick. Um, I hadn't had a chance to pay much attention to what's happening in the conjuring house. So if anybody's, uh, so oh, Mark yeah. and Abby, if you guys had a chance to watch any conjuring stuff, like we'll probably do a recap on it in a couple of weeks. Um, well, there was a terrifying, there's a cool footage shadow. of a shadow person, there's a cool picture of a shadow in there and, uh, that, that they caught. Um, and I just wonder if, if anybody got anything else in particular in there, cause, uh, uh, that episode, what we'll probably do is we'll, cover some of the original during story, what happened to the parent family, um, and then put in Corey's interview and then maybe, uh, talk about some of the evidence that people found on the live stream. Um, so if anything really good did happen, uh, like if, you know, a ghost slapped Corey in his balls or something like that, um, Abby, I didn't get to watch anything the last two days of it. Okay. Well, that's when, all the, that's when the ghost came out because they were waiting for a big finish. <laughs> The thing They're is, like, Abby's not watching. Quick, come out. The producers at the Dark Zone TV or whatever, the network that sponsored it, um, they had paid the ghosts to come out uh, on the last two days to make people feel that they got their money's worth. So they watched the whole thing. So, um, but OK, it's so a big finale. So <laughs> Abby and Mark, is there anything um, like, can you go back and watch? Like, is it all saved in the Dark Zone? So you can go back and watch it. Oh, Megan, happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday to you, Megan. Cheers to you. Happy Tuesday, Megan. Cheers. Hope you're well. Absolutely. It was hard bouncing around in and out. Oh, you know what the thing is, though? That's what like, oh. that's what Reddit's made for. Are specific, uh, specific, specific things like that. Where <laughs> people like... Teenage, teenagers will watch something for eight hours at a time, you know? Yeah. And if so, if somebody catches, that's what we keep hoping that, you know, we have these videos from the, the haunted locations. We're hoping that somebody will spot something that we didn't see. Well, the reason, you know, Oh yeah, that's, that's exactly right. When like, let's see, like, cause the thing is we have our eye, but we but I tell you the truth. When I'm watching this, I'm usually looking at Wendy or I because I'm like, well, how are we doing? How are we playing? Are we singing? You know, how are we sounding? Are, are there bags under my eyes? And I miss the ghost stuff because I'm too worried if I look fat. Oh, geez. Come on. Um, but, uh, you know, one of the reasons I say Reddit in particular is not because Reddit is not an internet cesspool because, of course, it's an internet cesspool. Um, but... So when the Roswell slides came out, and this was a thing about four years ago, um, maybe a little bit longer than that, but I think about four years ago, uh, 
where somebody said they had smoking gun evidence of the alien found in Roswell. And it ended up being like a picture of a, I don't know, it looked like an alien body, a tiny alien body that was then um, under, under glass. And people said they found these slides and there was a gift to somebody who said they'd worked in the Eisenhower administration. Okay. And so what happens is these slides are released in this pay-per-view event in Mexico city in 15 minutes, the slides are posted to Reddit and they find out that it's actually a picture of a mummy from a central American museum. And I'm glad you I'm glad you brought the Reddit thing back because it seemed really random that you just <laughs> leaped to that topic. Got a group of people who will watch something who, will, you know, right. A whole like a group mind, the, a hive well, mind, the hive mind. Yeah. That will go and try to debunk something. And you want it to be like, like, let's try to debunk it. And when they can't debunk it, that's when it's real. So that's exciting. Um, coming up, Terry, quick question. In one of these lives, can we talk about equipment? EMF audio, et cetera, that oh, is used. Maybe a tool. That's a great idea. Week. That is a great idea. Um, maybe I'll bring out a tool. That up. actually might be a good topic for a, a whole podcast episode. Yeah, of like equipment people use for paranormal investigation. You know, that's something, yeah. that's something we often ask paranormal investigators um, that we talk to in the podcast. Like, what's your favorite piece of equipment? Yeah. And I wish somebody would say something like, man, I love the spirit box. Or I love the Ovulus or, you know, think that wasn't I called the Oculus the other day, Wendy? Um, you called it that. <laughs> like the Oculus. Uh, but instead, it's always like, all you need, man, is your mind. And you're like, okay, I get right. All you need is your mind. I understand. But that's not going to convince anybody. No, 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 that's true. It's it's not empirical. And plus, anyone can just lie and say like, oh, I totally sensed. Yeah, there's a spirit in here. Well, however human senses are like more sensitive than a lot of equipment, you know, and our brains oh, yeah. are, po are capable of processing things and perceiving things that simple sensors are not necessarily. So there is something to that. And I actually, the first time I talked to an investigator and he's like, you know what, you don't need all that fancy stuff. Just, just take a pencil and a, <laughs> a notepad, just, you know, kind of Hardy boys style. And like, was that go in and, and note when you observe something. And I'm like, you know, this sometimes you get so caught up in the equipment that you don't even you lose your human senses and sensibilities. Was that Patrick from so. Ghost Mine? Who said that when you were um, talking about that? I feel I like I think it was actually the guy uh shoot, I can't think of his name. Um he was from Minnesota. Oh, the psychic no 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 uh, um the paranormal Oh, I wasn't there for that interview, so I don't even remember what he was called. Yeah. No, he was like an investigator, though. He he would like people would call him in for help to investigate their haunted houses and whatnot. But yeah, I just remember talking to him and he was saying that, you know, just go somewhere Use your and, paper. and just be still and observe, you know, what you hear. What do you, what do you see? What do you hear? What do you what do you feel? And just like we talk about animals having certain senses and picking up on things. I mean, we're animals too. That's true. <laughs> I'm a ferocious one. But we have keen senses. So sometimes you can pick up on things. Like people it depends. think about it. Like Sometimes my senses people... are keener than others. Well, okay. That's fair. You're, there's a certain uh, dulling of the senses. But when you consider that people can like predict, not predict, anticipate when the weather's going to change based on how they feel because they have aches and pains or certain, you know, it's like, yeah, it's a tickling of the butt hairs. incredible. What? Oh, the tickling of the butt hairs. When it's oh, gonna rain? Oh you never heard. I'm, okay. Oh, well, I guess, no, I guess it's I mean, just my all I heard was, I guess it's just my butt hairs. The audio cut out. And all I heard was butt hairs. And I'm like, <laughs> Hey, all it's right. a new tool. Apparently I, I had no idea. All right, Mark says he loves the SLS, and a friend of mine has a friend of his has one. You know, is that that's the the little stick figures, right? Yeah, yeah, those are pretty cool. You know, on the first, it wasn't the first ghost hunt you went on, Wendy. There was the SLS camera at the old Baraboo Inn. Yeah, and everybody was really uh, using that one, and and I thought it was, it was a little um, overhyped, I guess. 
Okay. Because no, I totally like I understand the the logic behind it and stuff like that, but that specific event it was the SLS is that what is it? SLS? Yeah, structured the light, SLS Mike was says, gospel. Uh, Mark says structured light sensor finds the stick person stuff. Yeah, okay. So it's basically kind of, it's kind of like what's in an Xbox. So it picks up and it, it like perceives a form of a human and so it it's, like it's draws co- in it's what it's connect, thinks. Wendy. Welcome to 2019. Oh my god. <laughs> the connect is part of the Xbox. I, I have one. Oh really? Okay, sure. I don't know. I don't I have nothing. I really have I know it was from a connect camera, so I'm just te- I was really teasing you. Yeah. No, you're right. You're right though. But uh but anyway, the sci- the theory behind it is that okay, so it's designed to pick up on and like perceive movement and form and then it like predicts that's how it knows like for when you play a game like Dance Dance Revolution or sorry, that's that's a really outdated example, but when you play one of those Dancy games or exercise right. games like the pitfall. camera like picks up on you and then it, it it's <laughs> it's kind of like a mocap thing where it takes the little stick figure and then it maps you onto a character well people have re you know they've found this alternative use for that where they're in a haunted location and then they hold the camera up and a stick figure appears where a human is not so didn't you, know, you do what motion type cap of stuff wendy didn't you do some motion cap stuff one time I auditioned for uh, a, a video game once. Um, I didn't actually get the part, so I didn't. I got to do the audition, which was really fun, but I didn't get the part, so I didn't get to do it. You didn't have the balls all over you. I did not have the balls all over me. Oh. I just pretended like I had the balls all over me. I wasn't. I, no, I, I wasn't sure how the audition went because the reason we're talking about this is because. Um, Madison Media Institute, also Raven Software and everything's based in Madison and they right. do motion cap things all the time. So we know people who work on the games that are looking for people. So I wasn't sure if yeah. Wendy, you did like a demo of something or uh, you auditioned. That's pre- that's still pretty cool. That's, you know, I'm there auditioning. No, it was awesome. Game. It was really fun. And I wish that I, uh, I wish I had done better, but I didn't. <laughs> so. All right. Well, you, um, you but you I got to see their whole inner studio. Andy Circus. I got to see the studio and I got to like pretend that I was, you know, like a, like an agent. And I, they showed me like how to hold a gun and stuff like that, nice. or pretend hold a gun. And anyway, I'm so far off topic now, but the SLS, the, the reason that I was like suspicious on that ghost hunt was because everybody was looking at it. And instead of just being like, Oh, that's an interesting, you know, maybe, maybe something's happening over here. It was like, the dude is on your shoulder. He's kicking you in the ear. You know, and it's like the camera's per- perceiving and it's it's making its best guess of these things, m- best guess of the shape, the human form that it thinks it's perceiving. But that doesn't, it's probably not that exact to where it's like, if there's a ghost, I don't know. I just, it. everybody was freaking out really hard over it. And I can see where it could be a cool tool, but I, that particular event was, didn't um, do it for you. It didn't do it for me. So, but I've seen other compelling evidence in places where, you know, ghosts had been seen and then they go in with one of those and it's the form is there exactly like in alignment with the story of somebody sees a form walking across a room or something like that. So I'm like, that's kind of cool. That particular day, like people were seeing like, two stick figures like coming together. And so they'd be like, Oh, well we're in the upstairs apartment where this used to be the whorehouse. So it's, these are ghosts fucking. And it was just like, I, okay. Like that, that's a little stretch. Um, and so it, that particular day seemed to stretch. And so the SL, like that was the first time I saw the SLS in action too. So I was like, what is this thing that people are talking about? Um, but it it seems like it can find uh, it can find activity things in the room it, it can sense something movement particularly where a normal camera or eye might miss the movement so I can right. see uh, where people so uh, Mark says he's got a video from the Palmer House in the Palmer House in Minnesota uh, of a child oh, figure cool. interacting and playing with so we're Sweet. gonna have to check that out Mark you're gonna have to yeah uh, you gotta share that send with it us. to us I'd and then we can, we can put it on one of the lives coming up soon. And he also says uh, SLS can get false positives because it's like pareidolia. Right. It's like pareidolia. So pareidolia is the fact that we, our mind is trained to see faces, 
because our faces are unique. Um, you know, like a dog, like two golden retrievers or whatever, pretty much look like two golden retrievers. Their, their scent is their unique marking. Humans, um, and even like chimps and baboons and stuff like that, primates, our faces are what makes us unique. And so we're trained to look at faces and trained to recognize faces, not trained, we're evolved to. And so, um, there's a whole, there's a great new Twilight Zone. So the eighties Twilight Zone, um, had, uh, writers like Harlan Ellison and, uh, George Martin, you know, Game of Thrones, uh, directors like Wes Craven and Toby Hooper, like great horror directors. So the eighties Twilight Zone had all of these awesome horror people working. And one of my favorite episodes is one, um, where people are talking about the faces they see in the wall. And the idea is that the faces they're seeing in the wall actually are people that want to drag them through the wall and murder them kind of thing. Um, but uh, it's that, that every time I pareidolia, so I'm looking at my wall right now and I can see three different faces just from the pattern of the stucco. And so, we're, right. we're, so your brain is processing that and what it knows is familiar. And that's what an SLS camera is because it's meant to process movement because it's meant to be, you know, when we're playing Wii tennis or some shit like that. Um, and I don't know how it works exactly, but I'm assuming it's picking up on, on the contrast, you know, or the, con the contrast of like the position of things. Anyway, it's, I could see where it might be susceptible to some error also, there's algorithms being used, and when you're in a room with a bunch of people and people are bound, like the thing isn't on a tripod, someone's holding it, they're moving. I, I just could see where, you know, there could be room for <laughs> All right. some error in there. And like Mark said, false positives. Okay, right, because it's pareidolia, it's, it's technological pareidolia. Um, let's go down because it seems like everybody in the comment section has some thoughts about sls and this is this oh, is goody. why well this is why i love talking to you guys and why i don't want to just talk to the randos on facebook is because um first of all randos would have tuned out about 15 minutes ago second of all it's that we can like everybody's like hey man let's talk about the sls scott i love grant wilson's quote about it uh Ghost hunting tools usually just exist to make measurements without bias. This tool has a bias since it's trying to find bodies to map. What mm -hmm. I want to do is have two SLSs at different angles because then if they both map the same thing, they'll end up verifying each other. Ah. Cool idea. Cool idea. It's a very wise approach. John, uh, I got doubts in the SLS. It uses machine learning algorithm being the scenes, so there may or may mm. not be something there. Bart explains why SLS seems to pick up evidence when other tools don't, thinking ghost adventures. Well, mm. I mean, plus, yeah, that's a good point. plus TV shows have a uh, vested interest in getting evidence at every location. Otherwise, uh, it's not going to be a very exciting four minutes of television. Except now Scott comes back with the ghost adventures. The Yuma Territorial Prison captured a full band, four members playing different instruments. Uh, a prison band because inmates were allowed uh, instruments, probably so they wouldn't murder each other. <laughs> Uh, and it, that's the coolest thing you've seen on SLS. So we'll have I to love that. take a look that's at that. So such a great one. And Abby's like, she loved it. Uh, Walter, just a little, uh, cool. uh, yeah. Wally. And, and uh, Mark, he posted the short video on the Sunspot page. Okay. So we'll, we'll share that with everybody. Oh, thank we'll you. Know. That's awesome. Uh, oh, I Ryan, can't see it. Ryan wants to do a drink. You know what, Ryan? I'm not going to turn you down. One, two, three. Oofta. Oofta. It is Tuesday after all. Yes, it is. And we thank you again for joining us yeah, tonight. Everybody hanging out. Um, I look forward to these things. Yeah, I really do. I enjoy talking to everybody, having fun, having a couple of cocktails. And uh, now when I say the word cocktails, that makes me sound like an alcoholic. Yes, it, like, it does. Yeah. It, it makes you sound like... We're having a couple when of... When we were kids. We're having a couple of cocktails tonight. I'll have about 12. Well, yeah. Yeah. Or like when your kids and your parents are like, we're going to go out for cocktails with our friends. And you're like, that sounds like a fun thing to do. I don't really know what. <laughs> what does that mean? Or you would get a kitty cocktail. Right. Well, Do you ever have those? Oh, of course I had kitty cocktails because my mother would always win like free drinks at places. <laughs> she would drink one and like give me a sip or something like that. Um, 
and then I would have a kitty cocktail to go along with it. Like a Shirley, I love a Shirley, kitty. Shirley I Temple. still, love, yeah, I still love those. Wait, yeah. no, it's a Roy Orbison. Wait, a Roy Rogers. Wait, a Roy Orbison. I'm pretty sure Roy wasn't sober a lot. Um, no, it's a Roy Rogers for boys. It's a Shirley Temple for girls. Oh, I didn't know it was called a Roy Rogers. That's very boys. like antiquated. I, well, I realize you know what? there I, should not okay. be a difference. I drank the Shirley Temple because obviously I was trans in 1982. You were ahead of your time. Yes. Well, you were just I neutral. Was a, I was ahead of your time. I was exploring my options. And I and guess what? I explored all my options, and I decided on fucking this. So, so I guess I lost. Um, I tell you what, though. Who, Good choice. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> I kid, I kid. I right, joke with so you. Good, good job, Mike. Okay. You know what, though? Let's play another song, and we'll talk for a few more minutes because we're having a good time. And really um, – if you yes, guys thank have, you. I love talking about the ghost stuff and the, the ghost hunting stuff because I'm interested in what everybody thinks about it because um, I've been on lots of different ghost hunts. And so everything from the spirit box to the EMF to um, a it's got a Royal oh. Orbison drink until even the ugliest is a pretty woman. Oh, my gosh. I like that. I like oh, it. Uncle Timmy's in my watch party, and he, he said, uh, "Anything he you want, me... you got it." Nice. He sent me a link to the uh, Rancid Ghost Band video, but he said, "Have a great night." All I right. need Mike. Thanks, Tim. So. <laughs> All right. So, um, well, speaking of, uh, I think I was talking about 2016 before. Um, Speaking of 2016, it's been four years since we lost Prince. About four years in a month. That's so hard to believe. Right. It, it feels like yesterday in a way. Yeah. And I I mean, obviously, I love Prince. I once I waited five hours in the rain one time to see him in Minneapolis at Paisley Park. Wait, what color was the rain? Oh, it it was dark. I'm pretty <sighs> sure it was just blue. There was no purple rain, even at Paisley Park oh. in, in Chanhassen. Um. And the thing is, though, people have uh, seen Prince's ghost even at Paisley Park. So they, they're, they're getting ready. To, I could imagine. They're getting ready to turn it into a museum like a Graceland. So they're getting ready to turn uh, Paisley Park into a Graceland style Prince museum. So That's people, awesome. So people are still working there. Um, as far as venue size. It was about the uh, venue. It was about the size of the rave. Maybe a little smaller. So about a 1,200 person capacity venue. It is, I mean, it was a pretty, it was a, a big venue. Um, but it was funny though, when we were waiting in line to see Prince, um, he was doing a, a free con- a free concert, but you had to make a $50 donation. Oh, Sharon, got Prince story. He came into West Photo one day when I was working. Pretty cool, even though I didn't get to. Oh, work. my God. That is That's cool. amazing. Well, Sharon, you were people looked, just you flipping looked, out. You would have looked over your shoulder. You wouldn't have seen him. Because you probably had a because you probably had a foot on him. Because he was such a little guy that he wore the. Uh, um, platforms wherever he went. And that was one of the reasons that dancing in the platforms for years was one of the reasons he had the pain in his legs. And that's why, oh, he, man. Was, that's why he was taking the, uh, yeah. the more, you know, the opiates in, in anyway. Um, oh, Laura coming in. Shirley Temple is seven up in Gr- Grenadine. Roy Rogers is Coke in Grenadine. Oh, thank you, Laura. I, I, I sit corrected. Yes. <laughs> He is very... I thought they were just different names for the same kitty cocktail, but apparently oh. they're different. So that's good to know good that you can know. order for your child. If you want to order your child a cocktail, and you, you can get the caffeinated one or the non-caffeinated and one. And you're not in Wisconsin where you can order your child a real cocktail. Um, she, he was very tiny. He wouldn't know he was a little guy. Um, and that's why. But the thing is, he wore the platforms so that he could dance and you know appear in life in this onstage character. And that's da- doing that for decades. I, I think... There's more to it than just that, though. Like, well, I think that's nice. I mean, that's a nice way of saying that's why he had an opiate addiction, rather than no, no, no. I know. I mean, I, I'm just saying. I'm sure hot for the the pills. pain could have, like, boiling down the pain to just like because he wore platforms. Sure. Okay. No, that's fair. That's fair. He's still like the most talented guy in the universe, right? 
the most talented guy in the year. Um, but the funny thing was, is that there was only, there was a limited amount of spots when we were waiting in line to go to Paisley Park. And he was performing at midnight. Was it a, a show that started at midnight? There's no booze or anything like that. They weren't serving or anything. Um, but you did a $50 donation to a charity. And then you come in. And um, but the the the, lang, the waiting in line was so long, um, people started snapping at each other. People started running. Oh, people started. No. People started running running across the line. People, you know, like there was a bus that we didn't know about, and so people would get on the bus, and the bus would oh, get in earlier than the, than the line did. So some, it turned ugly. Right. And humanity. You know, and so we just kept imagining Prince like behind, like watching everything. Um, behind like a like a series of cameras like a whole thing of cameras and he's like let's try this and see what they do you know <laughs> like all these little things experimenting right let's let's see like yeah i want i want to watch a fight oh my god kind that's terrible and it just made us laugh you know this idea um that's and then hilarious. He, put, he put on an amazing show he only played a couple he opened up in 1999 um he played purple rain for somebody like that had donated a thousand dollars to the charity like somebody who is That's sitting, so cool. you know, and so, um, but it was, I mean, a crowd of less than a thousand people just all, and you were like 30 feet away from Prince. Uh, like I, I almost like, I wanted to be like, let's take him home. We can probably fit him in your purse. Let's take him. Oh home. my God. God, I wanted so much. But anyway, <laughs> we love him. And people have see, seen things around Paisley park. One of the interesting things though, uh, the most interesting ghost stories around Paisley park though, is um, the fact that uh, somebody reported getting um, like s- their ring doorbell went off, and it was like a purple mist. That's and pretty awesome. There was a copy of the Watchtower magazine left there. Uh... Prince was a Jehovah's Witness. Yeah. Who would sometimes go in the neighbor in the neighborhoods, and he would walk around the nearby neighborhoods, and he would do he would go out like Jehovah's Witnesses, and just you know he'd say, "Hey, have you heard the news or whatever?" and give him a copy people a copy of the Watchtower, and he said he captured a purple mist on his ring doorbell, and I thought that was kind of the the cool at least most original ghost story out of it, more than just people that is cool. seeing shadows and hearing music and all those kind of things. The other interesting thing um, that I heard about Paisley Park is from when Kevin Smith has a great story about uh, he was trying to get Prince to be the band at the end of Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. In the end, it, up, it was ended up being Morris Day in the time. So he picked yep. the second best band from Minneapolis. <laughs> there you go. Um, so it ended up being Morris Day in the time. Uh, and Prince, was you know, he wrote their songs anyway. But... So, uh, well, Morris Day also um, said he experienced the Prince thing. L.A. Reid um, had a like a like a ghostly Prince experience. He said that Prince had a premonition about dying, like said it to him. Um, but uh, has the purple mist been posted anywhere? I wasn't able to find that, Scott. I was looking for it. Um, Boy, that would sure be nice to see. Yes, but I I wasn't able to find it. This was like this was on a Minneapolis radio station is where they did the story. Um, maybe it was Jimi Hendrix playing a gag from the other side. Well, Prince in the, in the last couple of years he had a whole total Hendrix look, like the the circular glasses and the fro, and like he even did like a a certain kind of like Hendrix homage. Um, yeah. In the last years of his life. Um. Anyway, Kevin Smith said that when he went to go to Paisley Park uh, to visit Prince to discuss to see if, you know, he might be in Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. He's got all of these stories about, like, how crazy Prince was, how cool he was, but, like, how there was Mm -hmm. microphones in the bathroom and things like that in case there was any – every room had a microphone and a place in case inspiration struck. That's awesome. I love how he just, like, he made this incredible place – like suited for him and his creativity yes. and also for his generosity where, you know, he could utilize it to have these concerts where he was raising funds for good causes. That's just, that's such an impressive human. Well, and, Bless and, his heart. Right. And it was amazing. 
I mean, it was amazing being Paisley Park and watching Prince with like, there's no, yeah. without waiting five hours, there's no way in hell I'd ever be able to ever watch him yeah. with that few people and be that close. Right. Oh my gosh. So no way. Unbelievable. Um, and the fact that we got to do it before he passed was a very lucky thing. So very. Uh, anyway, uh, Prince, my sister loved Prince so much. She painted her room purple when she was, uh, it's a good color. 15, 15 <clears throat> years old because when Purple Rain came out. Oh, and Wendy's wearing it. Oh, and yeah. I see it. I see it. She's got uh, she's got the purple flower for the purple And the purple one. eyeshadow. Oh, and the purple eyeshadow. I <laughs> Look at that. She's, Wendy, it's okay. I don't expect you to notice that. I've got a lot of colors going on in here right now. So, <laughs> Looking beautiful for the purple one. Well, let's play one. Yeah, I got to get... Let's, yes. Let's oh, and we one. learned this... We learned this as a tribute yes. after he, shortly after he passed away. Because we had a show that weekend. We're like, we got to do a Prince song. Um, mm, so sad. Let's pick one um, that maybe people would not think was an acoustic guitar and violin song. And this is the one we tried. Maybe don't keep that in there. Uh, we'll see. Okay. So that was a little Prince tribute on a uh, Tuesday night, two for Tuesday. And we just wanted to kind of close uh, with that song here tonight. Um, all right. Anybody in the watch party I missed? If you're watching along with us online, uh, hope you're doing well. Uh, if you're from that uh, uh, part of Facebook. And... Um, we're coming back on Thursday night. Uh, Wendy and I will be hanging out with Ben uh, for Thirsty Yay. Thursday um, with some more Sunspot Thursday Night fun. Live. Yeah, Thursday Night Live with more Sunspot fun for everybody. Um, then on Sunday, uh, 2 o'clock, we're going to be having a, a session with the Outlaw Psychic. And so um, hanging out with the Outlaw Psychic, that's just going to be a paranormal conversation on Sunday. Plus... Uh, the podcast coming at you and see you on the other side, other side podcast.com. If you guys like the silly things that we do uh, every week, um, every couple of days, please check out right up above uh, patreon.com slash sunspot music. Yes. Um, and, and if you're a current Patreon member, stay tuned because uh, it's been a, it's been a great 
period of growth for our Patreon community yes, here. It has. And um, so we are working on getting all everybody's rewards out to them and also coming up with some cool new rewards. Yes. Yeah. For those of you who believe in Sunspot and who yes. stuck with us and, and helped us get through this this weird time. So uh, so stay tuned. We'll be making some announcements about that. And I'm pretty excited. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. But we'll continue pretty... providing all the the bonus content and uh, our community, of course. I see you on the other yes. side. Sunspot uh, Patreon community. Um, so before we get rolling, any last questions or anything like that tonight? Um, just double checking. Uh, otherwise back at, uh, Thursday at seven 30, um, and then Sunday at 2 PM, uh, you guys that had requests last week, uh, we're going to do our best to honor those on Thursday. Um, anybody else that has a request, uh, if you are a Patreon, put it in the see on the other side, Patreon community, like the VIP group, because that way we'll have a chance to see it first. Um, but anybody else that has a request, uh, just put it on the Sunspot page and we'll, we'll try to get to it as well um, eventually. But everybody, We like all the requests. Yes. No, all especially when you request our songs. Um, but <laughs> if you want to request a cover and it might be something we could do, um, we're still going to be recording. Dane County, we're all under on house arrest un indefinitely now. <laughs> It is, I mean, it is house arrest indefinitely now. Like there's no, there's no phase one is not reopening is not started yet. So when people talk about Wisconsin, other parts of the state are open up. We're not, um, we're keeping it safe, keeping it safe. Keep, uh, right, we're keeping it something trying to here. keep our germs to ourselves. Uh, and we hope that you guys are doing well and healthy and safe. That's like the most important thing. Right. And you know, we'll, we're going to keep doing what we do the best way that we can, even though it's a little bit limited here within our rectangles. But right. uh, even, we're, we're trying. Well, I've been watching kind of, all these other bands like playing together in person. And I'm like, oh, that uh, that is not social distanced. Right. And, and so I get it. I mean, we just can't do it here yet. Right? Yeah. Well, except except in that last video at the Club sun, club Sunspot. Right. We, uh, we, we, we're able to play at Club Sunspot. Right. With a little, through the through the secret of Hollywood magic. <laughs> Now, we were able to perform together on stage without, you know, while remaining miles apart from each other. Strange. Magic. Um, Scott, we still need to identify the horror movie of the month for the next Patreon <gasps> hangout. So we should oh, discuss about yes. the horror movie, um, hopefully based on a, a, a real uh, uh, or, or some kind of um, real legend kind of thing we can talk about. Uh, we can all talk about in the Patreon group. Um Abby, Racine County is open. However, the city of Racine is still on lockdown, which is where I am. Uh, yeah. Oh. I mean, same thing. It's like, and so Dane County, I mean, the surrounding counties, Sauk County, I think, is still under lockdown, but um, the surrounding counties, most of them are open. But Dane County, um, that's it. And, and that's yeah, and at. we just hope you guys are, are safe and also that you're uh, taking care of yourselves and, you know, right. mental health is really important. So whatever you need to do, whether it's, meditation or yoga or listening to some heavy metal sometimes really loud works. and sometimes banging your head. Cause sometimes you got to do that, you know, and it's like everybody has their own way to work through these things. Right. And we're here for you as best we can be. And we really um, just want everybody to, we just hope the best for everybody. Well, especially, so. I mean, so like we're lucky in the fact that um, we've been able to keep our art going uh, we've been because yeah. we, we were doing tech and stuff like that, and this even before uh, all of this business went down. So um, we're able to expand on the technical stuff. A lot of bands that just played live and didn't have that kind of thing don't get that kind of, um, you know, they weren't lucky that way because so now they can't play shows, and shows are the makes where they made money. Um, and so it is hard on a lot of artists. And I know yeah. a lot of our friends work at venues and bars and all those right. kind of things. And so it's hard on you guys particularly. And, and so, venue owners. Right. I mean. They can't put on shows. And they can't. It's rough. So in the entertainment business particularly, it's a very tough time. Um, mm -hmm. But the big thing is, is that we're still going to have fun. We're still going to work on it. We're still going to have good times. Yeah. And, and it's temporary. Right. So we have the future to look forward to. And we're still going to make the best of it. And we want to make the best of it yes. with you. So everybody who Please. joins us on these two for Tuesday, like bonus things, like Wendy and I just yeah. wanted to come on Tuesdays just because we had a lot of fun on Thursdays. We're like, well, what, yeah. why not do more? 
because we're used. And I really, honestly, I look forward to this. It's like the highlight of my week, just getting to chat with people and catch up. And absolutely, and, I don't know, Stu. Thanks to all you, all stuff. So yeah, Pamela, thank you, Stu. To you. Pamela, cheers. Abby, you make Tuesday thank better. You. Oh, Aww, thanks, Abby. You make Tuesday better, Abby. Right. Thank you, Terry. Um, thank you, Terry. Scott's Club Sunspot, the Sunspot Holodeck. <laughs> I'm I'm super excited about Club Sunspot. It's like I almost feel like, yeah, it is like a holodeck. Like we can escape to this alternate place where we can rock out together. Right. And so look out for more videos from Club Sunspot. Yeah, we'll see what happens. It's looking like it might happen. <laughs> so okay, you guys ha have a great couple of days. We'll see you Thursday at 7:30 p.m. Um, if anybody has anything uh, in the Patreon group, just jump it and toss it in. Um, if anybody has any other questions, feel free to direct message us or say hi or anything like that. Um, Sharon, live chats like this get me through the quarantine evenings. Thank you, Sharon. Aww. Love that you, Sharon. A, that means a lot. We certainly do. It really certainly does. Do. Yeah. Thank you. So, uh, and Mark, look for it. Of course. Take care to you too, buddy. Um, yes. And Mark, oh, he, he, he's got so many positive uh, Facebook updates. Oh, I know. Like I that. know. It always puts me it's in a good mood. It's very inspiring. Yes. I agree. So Totally. Um, we will see you guys in a couple of days. Everybody stay strong, uh, stay healthy, right? And stay positive. And let's all um, keep looking up. And the reason we want to keep looking up, we might see a UFO. See you later.